golden squash casserole. Last week, I must say last week, it's probably been more than seven days, but last week I got the craving for good old fashioned squash casserole. And I haven't had it, like I can remember the last time I ate it, which was probably 2002. And I can say that because Max was two. I can remember where we were living. I can remember when I ate it. And um, uh, it was at a potluck and it was so good. And I was like, man, I would love to have that. But, but, and, but I haven't had it in ages. And so I was like, how can I make it? Um, how can I make it with what I have on hand? That was my requirement. Like, what do I have? How can I recreate those flavors? How can I get what I'm remembering um, right now? So this recipe wasn't about being whole food. It wasn't about being oil free or any of those um, any of those things. It was about what do I have on hand that will get me that flavor so I can stick that squash casserole in my face. And I did pretty good. I have been through a couple of versions of it. And I'm trying to nail down, I was trying to nail down like as close to that, those flavors with what I had on hand. So I have the recipe written out already. I've already written it out. It's, uh, so if you want to go over uh, to my website, jillmckeever.com, it's right on the home page. It's the first block in the um, cooking creations collection. And it's called Jill's Golden Squash Casserole. And it's just a little PDF file. I made it a PDF file um, because I felt like it. And uh, <laughs> and uh, that website, here's why I made it a PDF file. The website is more of a product website. It's not really a blog. It doesn't have that kind of platform and I'm okay with that. I like it that way. So I like making my recipes PDFs. So um, it's over there. So if you wanna go ahead and just download, download the PDF and then, uh, you can look at it from your device or you can print it off on your printer, whatever you want to do. That's totally up to you. I've made it easy to read, um, but I, I did want to, I designed it so you could just print it off and then like stick it up on your refrigerator and, um, and then you're ready to cook it. So, so I'm going to just show you today how I'm throwing it together. I'm not going to get into the measurements of things because that's all written out in the recipe. So, I just want to show you how fun it is and what my thinking was behind um, the ingredients that I chose. One, the first thought was, what do I have on hand? So probably you're going to have everything on hand. So you could probably make, make besides the squash, you could probably make this 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 afternoon. So, um, so let's get started. Hey, S N N G one two three four S. That's <laughs> Good morning. Okay, so let's get started. So um, everything looks good. I can see your comments. While I'm throwing things together, I am not going to read comments so that I can stay on track and try to uh, make this an efficient cooking process. Um, but if you have qu if you have questions about the recipe. Um, I will address those at the end. So write down the questions that you might have while I'm cooking. And then once I've pulled, like maybe when we get to the baking process, uh, we'll be waiting for it to bake. That's about 20 minutes. Uh, we can have a chit chat and a Q and A then. And then, um, and then you know how it goes. We'll chit chat for 20 minutes and then we'll pull it out of the oven. You get to see what it looks like. And, uh, and then if you have any additional questions, we can address those um, in the comments below the video after the live is done. How's that? Does that sound fair? Okay, so let's get going. I've got some cooking to do. Um, let me change this over. Boom, you can still see my face and see my counter. Yay! Now, if I, um, um, I think there's a, it's a live chat on, YouTube. So if anybody comes across, who wants to be my moderator? If a, if a jerk comes across, oh, I don't know how to do that. I need a moderator. If anybody wants to volunteer to be moderator, that would be, um, 
that would be great if some some weed head comes along. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. What do I want to do? All right. So um, I've already got a, a couple of things prepped. I need to I need to cut up my squash. Let me wash and wash my squash. And I need to get my pan heated. I'm using a large skillet um, over medium to medium high heat. It's not fully medium high heat, but it's not. It's a little more than medium. Whatever that. I have a. I just have dots on my oven, so just somewhere between medium and medium high. Set the set your skillet to about like that. All right, how's my head? Oh, my head's cut off. Hold on. Hold on. It's been a minute, y'all. Okay, that's good. Now you can see plenty of me. Okay, good. So the first thing I was bumping into, because it's been a long time, um, I can't even remember. I know I've made squash casserole back in the day, but it'd been a while. And it's so, um, so I had to work out like how to cut, cut up the squash to make it good. Cause you remember squash casserole, like there's a balance between the, the there's a balance of, of yellow squash creaminess. And then there's that that layer, that salty layer that's right on top that balances out the sweetness of the squash. But then there's all that creaminess going on around the squash, you know, and then moistening the, the crust, you know, there's like, the, the, there's a happy balance there. And so I figured out that, uh, that there, it is important how thick to cut the slices. So I did big and chunky, but that was too watery, uh, to, to do even like a half to do, um, you know, like a three quarter inch cut was too much. Hold on just a second. Sorry. Hold on just a second. Let me go up. Get you a little closer. Oh, hold on. I'm going to have little hiccups like this from till I get used to this. Okay, there we go. Hold on. Come a little bit closer. I want you. Uh, oh. Okay, there we go. I'm back. Hold on. Boom. All right, there we go. I want you to enjoy as, this as closely as I'm enjoying this. Okay, so I figured out that about a fourth of an inch slice is going to make a makes a good uh, squash casserole. When we cook it, it's the this skin is going to be nice, uh, retain its firmness, and the the center here doesn't get all watery. So anything bigger than this, when you, at the end you get a, you get a big burst of water uh, in your bite, and it actually takes away from the the creaminess of the sauce and the saltiness of the crust, and it's a, it's distracting. So try to keep your um, your slices small. Also, you're going to need more squash than you think you're going to need for this recipe. I'm going to fill a 9-inch pie plate. And kind of like apple pie, you have to you have to make more, you have to slice up more bed uh, more filling than you think you need cuz it all it, this squash cooks down. And uh, once it's cooked down, there's it's not as much as you think. You'll, you'll have less than you think. And so, um, depending on when you go squash shopping, 
depending on how big the squash is at the grocery store, if you've got some nice size squash, you know, some mature size squash, you, you may only need about four of them to fill this pie plate. But like the f couple of days ago, I made a, I made this to, to as a, te I made a test batch and all they had at the store were like the little bitty ones. And that, it took me six of the little bitty ones to get this pie plate filled. And even then, I still could have used more. So I recommend on that, you know, with this recipe to buy a couple of more yellow squashes than you think or than the recipe calls for. Um, just to just to be on the safe side. OK, and so to turn and also what helps is uh, what's helped me is having the pie plate right here and filling it up as I go. And then that'll, I can, I can just use that as a means to how to stop when, knowing when to stop. But we're going to, but you want to pile this pie plate up, get it nice and like, nice and tall. For, and then the other day I was thinking when it, for presentation I'll, I'll probably repeat myself but I don't want to forget this so I'm saying it I'm saying it out loud because you know menopause brain right uh, I'm thinking of it I better say it uh, save out I mean I'm I'm not gonna keep in my, like cut some big ones you know cut some nice slices and and in the end like when we start prepping this it's real pretty to have squash around the the around the edges like in the ba at the end and we put the breadcrumbs on having some uh, little half moon slices like this uh makes the presentation pretty so so uh keep that in mind when you're slicing if you've got a if you've got a nice uh fat uh squash like this one uh save some slices for for decoration But right now we're we're gonna I mean they're gonna get cooked, but just keep that in mind. Bam, bam. See this is getting boom. I'm really piling this eye. See this even looks this looks full, doesn't it? But it's not full enough, I promise. So far in making this, um, I, I keep thinking to myself, yeah, I could have cut up an extra squash. I am so glad to be here. And I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad that you jumped online, that you just happened to be online, that you just happened to sign in. And you're like, what am I going to watch this morning? And then you found me. We found each other. We're back together again. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. But I still have a little neck here. Let me get this neck. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, there you go. Let me get rid of that. Lovely. See how piled up and high that is? Oh, great. Okay. That's just part of it. Now I need to cut up some onion. So I have, um, I think I just said one medium onion in the recipe. And uh, I have large onions. And then I have these two small ones. So I'm going to, and these are my oldest ones. So I'm going to use these two small onions today. Don't, uh, with whatever you have on hand, it's kind of the same with the onions. Uh, this recipe tastes better with more onion than it does with less onion. So whatever you have on hand, go a little more onion. Go with the, go with the bigger onion. We're, this is going to get cooked with the squash. 
and it's going to be sweet. It's going to have that nice onion, uh, sweet onion flavor happening and working with the, the squash. So don't, cut, don't hold back. Ooh. Onion skin. Onion skin boogers. Ugh. Okay. I don't know why I'm wearing my reading glasses. I only need them for reading comments. My eyes have changed. Anybody else like this? Now that I am, like, for the last few years, um, my eyesight, going through perimenopause and menopause, my eyesight has changed. And you think, oh, I'm getting, you know, we could all think, oh, we're getting older, our eyes are getting worse. But actually, my farsightedness has improved, and it's just my nearsightedness that's degrading. And that's weird, because up until the peak of perimenopause, it was just the other way around. My farsightedness was getting eh, and my nearsightedness was great. And then, uh, so I was going to the optometrist, you know, trying to improve my farsightedness. And now, um, it's the, I can't wear my glasses. Like I, I don't wear my my expensive bifocals. Oh my God, the robbery of all that. Uh, I can't, you know, I don't wear those because they don't fit my eyes. And so now my farsightedness is fine. I don't, I don't need the glasses to see uh, or drive or anything like that. But man, if I want to read anything that's, if I want to read anything close by, I got to put on my readers. So I'm, I'm wearing readers now and I've, I've got these useless, expensive bifocal glasses um, sitting around. They're actually in my van. Because on my license it says I have to wear glasses when I drive. And I, it's not time to go to the DMV. So I'm not going to, to prove to them that I don't need the glasses. So I carry the useless glasses in my car in the event that I get pulled over. Because you know me, I'm wild. I'm a rowdy driver. I drive a minivan. I'm crazy. Um, but I have this in my mind. I'm like, oh, one day you might get pulled over. And uh, you need to have your, your regular glasses on, even though they'll be absolutely useless. You can't be wearing your readers, except when you go to sign the ticket that the popo hands hand you. <laughs> that is my insanity. Okay. Boom. All right, my onion's done. Oh, and garlic. I need some garlic. Hold on. I got my garlic already peeled. And this garlic is good, too. A little bit of garlic in there is nice. I didn't put a lot because I, like, I want the sweet onion. But I think a little garlic helps. I have not tried this recipe with just garlic powder. So... Um, but I'm using two decent sized garlic cloves and that seems to be plenty for my taste. Hey, do you see that? Where did it go? Now I can do my greeters back on. Where did that onion booger go? Oh, it's on my finger. Okay. Okay. My pan is heated up. How are we going to do the pan? Bam. All right. Let's drop this in the skillet. Oh, do you hear that? Oh, of course you can hear it because it's on the microphone. I don't have a stove cam. I don't know how to work that. But uh, what I want to do, we'll get this worked out. Okay. Um, but today, bear with. 
So all I really want to do in the skillet is draw out the the liquid from the onions first. I want to get the onions about halfway cooked before I add the squash because yellow squash doesn't take that long to cook. You you know that. So um, I'm going to sprinkle this. I'm going to put this on medium. This is really hot. I've got this on medium heat. I just want to sprinkle this with a little salt to uh, draw out the liquids on the onion. Just get that salt distributed. And then make sure my onion is... Um, Kind of flatten the pan. So everybody be touching. Come on. Okay, put the lid on. And then come back in about four minutes. Okay, in about four minutes, the onion should be partially translucent. And then I'll add the, the squash. Now, I did try this. I did... Uh, it works both ways, so you can decide. You can leave the, the squash like this and salt it in the pan to draw out the juices. You want to do it that way. Or you could take the squash and you could put it in a bowl and sprinkle salt over it and kind of help draw out those juices sooner. And then I gave that a rinse to wash off, uh, wash off the salt because I was going to have salt in my... Um, the, the cream is going to have a little salt, and the crust is going to have a little salt. So I didn't want uh, a casserole dish that's too salty. Uh, oh, my nose is itching. But, so you, you decide what you want to do on that, but you could salt it now or you to, you know, help these to draw out the juices, or you could do it in the pan. I'm going to do it in the pan today, but, I'm, but be mindful of that when you're putting this together, that there's going to be salt in that crust. And we want the, you do want some salt. If you don't salt the squash in some way, pre-putting pre it all together, it's going to be missing a note. The squash doesn't taste as sweet if it doesn't have a little bit of that salt in there. I've already done that, and it, it feels flat without the salt at that beginning stage. So I uh, just want to throw that out there and... Um, so keep that in mind. All right, that's to the side. While that's um, while that's going, in four minutes we can make the the bread topping. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see how can I just a second. We're gonna work that out. Um, ba, ba. Bum, 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 bum. Hmm. Hold on just a second. Bear with. Uh, oh, 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 uh, okay. I got it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just a second, just a second, just a second. Uh, boom. Hit. Um, hold on. Turn this around. Stay right there. Don't go anywhere. Boom. Okay, let's try that. Oh, it's a little weird. Let's just go with it. You're gonna see my dirty floor. Okay, let's try this. Bam. Okay, <sighs> talk about reality cam right here. Okay, that's it. Let's try that. Is that good for y'all? I want it like, oh no, let's go. Let's see how, how jiggy I can get. Oh, that's even better. <gasps> that's even better. Wait, wait, wait. Boom! Oh, okay, let's do it. All right, so in my food processor, I've already got the S blade happening. The breadcrumbs go like this. I've got three. <laughs> I've got three pieces of uh, whole wheat 
bread here. I didn't toast it. It's not necessary. It's going to get toasted in the oven. And I and just because of the of my life here with this uh, this processor, I do do a little pre tearing to cut that up. Okay, my onions are done. Hold on just a second. The onions are um, ready for stirring. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm halfway on the cooking of the onions. I wish I could show you this. Uh, I think I will. Let's let's just be completely rogue. You want to? Hold on. Just let's, it's gonna get butt wild here. I'm not ready. Uh, hold on. Oh. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, how do I turn this around? This second. Uh, turn that around. And hold on. Boom. Boom. There we go. All right, there we are. See there. So we're not. It's not totally. We're, we've got the shish. Shish. It's part. These are starting to become translucent. Not all of them. But four minutes is good on medium. And we've got a nice little sticky sticky pan here. So um, if this gets too brown, if you're getting too brown, give it a couple of tablespoons of water. Uh, it doesn't matter if that water is hot or cold. But a couple of tablespoons will, will you know, just keep that from burning and getting icky. Loosen up our onions. Okay, there we go. Sorry, that's loud. I'm sorry. Okay, now let's put in our squash. Oh my gosh, that's really full. And I'm one-handed. Oh my lord, the talent of my skills. Oh my gosh. Wait, talent and skills. Which is it? Let's say skills. The amazingness of my skills. Okay, that's really full. See that? That's really full, but it'll all cook down. Okay, now for the salt. I'm just pinching it. Well, come on, a real pinch. Okay, there we go. Let's give it a little toss. One-handed toss. Oh my gosh. This woman is so amazing. Let's sing it with me. Jill's so amazing. I'm so glad she's here. She's back. She's my favorite YouTuber of the year. Who cares about being on YouTube? She's my favorite person of the year. There we go. That's what I want. We'll work it out. We'll get that song down. Anybody know how to play guitar? We need backup, bass player, anything. Okay, there we go. Okay, I won't bang the pan, but get back in my Okay, let's put the lid on. All right, and my heat went down now that I got those cold squashes, so I'm going to turn that back up to that medium, medium low. I mean, medium, medium high. And let's get back to the squash. I mean, the breadcrumb. How, do I, how did I do that before? Hold on. Okay, and then go like that. And we're barbar. Go bar bar bar. Okay, there we go. And bam. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, let's get back to that breadcrumbs. No breadcrumbs. Okay, so on my breadcrumbs, I use this. This is my go to breadcrumb topping recipe. I use this. When I make creamy alfredo with the cashews and cauliflower, like the cauliflower and cashew sauce, uh, that's really good. I, for my tetrazzini, my soy curl tetrazzini, I use the same breadcrumb. So this is my go-to. It's not the traditional, like in traditional squash casserole that they used, uh, you know, old school, you would use a sleeve of saltine crackers. Uh, but I'm not, I don't have that. And, uh, but I always have whole wheat bread on, on hand. So, uh, this, this will, if you, if you're the same, you've got your favorite whole grain bread on hand, then just use that. Use, uh, 
of the three average slices. And this is going to yield almost two cups of breadcrumbs, almost, which is ex just as much as we need for this recipe. And then um, I like to add parsley and uh, a little bit of onion powder. Oh, nope, this way. Sorry. <laughs> A little bit of onion powder. And I'm just measuring this out here because I forgot to get my measuring spoons out. And then a pinch of pepper. Got to have that pepper in there. Oh, and I need my salt. And a little bit of salt because it helps that this crust be salty. And if you plan to make this casserole, you want to double it and make it fit in a uh, bigger, like a 9 by 13 casserole, I think that doubling the crust will get you all the way across. But you may want to say times three on the breadcrumb topping for a casserole if you want a nice thick crust. Just saying. Write that down in your notes. Okay, that's all that's, all that's in the uh, breadcrumbs. Oh, I need to set the timer. Hold on just a minute. I did not set the timer. Okay, I want five minutes on that squash. Hello. All right, I'm gonna, it's, there's gonna be some noise. Pull your ear, AirPods out of your ears. I'll try to stand back. Have your processor on high, so we just got a quick, quick uh, processing, and I'm just trying to get this down to a fine crumb. I still see some crust. Hold on. There we go. That's good. I love this processor. I can't even tell you how old it is. I've had it. I've had it for a good while. It's a Breville. I like Breville. Not a sponsor. Wish they were. That'd be cool. Y'all can all write Breville and say, hey, we know somebody who's really great in the kitchen who loves your appliances. She's awesome. You should sponsor her. Okay. Get out of there. I like I I like this processor for the the for the, blah, 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 for the simple fact that I could do what I did and dance around with that thing and really maneuver uh, my food in the bowl to get it cut the way I want it. You can't do that with a regular you know, stationary food processor. Okay, that's done. Look at that. That's really nice. I gotta, I'm got. i doing opposite here. Isn't that nice? So we got a nice, um, small, crumbly crumb. And there's still some pieces in there. That's fine. They'll get good and crunchy later. But this is great. I like this one. This one, this that combination kind of makes me think of a stove top without all the old bread. How are we doing? I got two minutes on that squash before I have to pay attention to it again. All right, that's done. Next, let's go to the sauce. La sauce. Wow. Okay, can you see that all right? Oh, yes. Okay, good. All right, so on the sauce, the goal is I don't want to mess with that. Okay, I'll just have to. This is weird. Okay. All right, on this sauce, remember, like I said at the top of this video, I am trying to re I was trying to recreate this this wonderful, amazing golden squash casserole with the ingredients that I already had 
in my kitchen. So I always have uh, extra firm tofu. And uh, for to fill a pie plate, falling off frame, to fill a pie plate with more than adequate sauce, I, I would say about a third, I've, I said half in the recipe, half of a 14 ounce container, okay? Uh, and you can do extra firm tofu, which I always have on hand, but if you have firm, that's fine, do that too. And if you have soft, I think that would work. I know soft tofu has more water in it than, um, I keep falling out of frame, has more water in it. So you may have to add more cashews. Uh, boom. You may have to add more cashews to get it thick. Okay. Where's my cashews? I forgot my cashews. How much cashews did I say? Where's my cashews? A uh, half cup. I will measure this out. I want my thickness to, I want to be able to depend on the thickness of my sauce. Oh, it's time to stir the squash. Okay, hang tight. Let's take care of the squash. All right. Oh, and uh, but yeah. Okay. Nope, I can't do it that way. Hold on. Turn the camera around. Oh my God, this is so weird. Bam, bam. Is it showing up? Okay, there we go. All right. So our squash is not going to be ready in five minutes, but there's something I want to do here. That's important for me, important for my memory and my flavor. And that is that if I were making this a long time ago, like before I went plant-based, I would have started this pan with, and my grandmother, did my grandmother make this? Oh, anyways, doesn't matter. We would have made this with a, uh, a dollop of um, bacon drippings in the pan. So there would have been a nice salty, uh, smoky, you know, hickory bacon flavor note to all these vegetables. So I want that flavor in there. So I am going to hit this, hit the squash with some Colgan hickory liquid smoke. Okay. So I'm just going to bam, bam, bam like that. Okay. I don't know how much that is. I just go around the pan and hit it with that liquid smoke. And then I, now I want to give it a toss. I don't, I'm going to give this a toss one handed again. Be sure to hold on to the pan. Do not attempt to do this. I am a skilled professional. Okay, I just want to get that. And I've got, look at there, that little bit of water helped kept the pan clean. So my pan is clean, it's not sticky. The onions, look at the onions. Oh, look at the onions. Onions are cooked through. Thank you. And then our squash is not quite ready. The squash needs to keep going. We need a little more time on the squash. And the squash is going to get 20 more minutes in the oven. So it's not important. It's important that we don't cook the squash all the way through. But we do want that skin cooked. We want it al dente. Just like our pasta. We need a little bind to the squash pre-oven. Sorry, got to do that. Okay, back on with the lid. Okay, well, I want to trap that heat. I want to continue steaming. And I'm keeping the heat. See, it's not medium, and it's really not medium high. It's just right there. It's just, you know, right there. And that's enough to keep everything from burning for me, for my stove, for my burner. All right, let's, um, let me reset my camera. Whoa, you almost went flying across the room. Holy crap. Okay, power, bam. Okay, 
turn that around. Wake up. Okay, there we go. Turn that around. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. And back to the sauce. All right, back to the sauce. Um, okay, I'm trying to get my fluids in here. So I've got the cashews, the, the tofu. I need to add some hot water. When I came, when I, when I'm making this, I'm trying to think sour cream. I want it. There needs to be some tang because an original gold, you know, an original squash recipe, there would be sour cream making up for the sauce. And for me, for my, for my taste buds, adding lemon juice. Just good old bottled lemon juice to my cream sauces that I want to be to, that I want to pretend are sour cream. I add lemon juice. Okay, so that so a little lemon juice. There's the tang. What else am I doing? Lemon juice. Okay, let's get that liquid smoke out. Just a just a couple of drops of liquid smoke. Not too many. Do not get butt wild here because you're gonna taste that bacony flavor on the squash. And so just to keep things separated, just a few drops here to say, yeah, we go together, but we don't want a whole bite of hickory smoke. All right, what's the next thing? Um, then some, uh, I've got some, the label fell off. Better than bouillon, no chicken base is helpful. And uh, just a little bit of that, not, not a whole lot. Just start, start yourself out with about a half a teaspoon. It does, it, you're really not gonna taste a whole lot of it, but skipping it, you miss out on the, um, it's, it's got a, like a little umami, whatever flavor to it. And I like it. It, it, it is, a, there is a difference. Okay, what's the next thing? Onion powder. I need my onion powder. And I don't need much of that. Just a little bit. Little dabble do me there. And some pepper. Okay, and for the most, most important ingredient, you cannot, absolutely cannot omit this ingredient because this Next one is what makes the cream sauce sing. And you're just like, oh my God, this is awesome. You need the devil's butthole. That's right. You must add the devil's butthole to the sauce in order to make it amazing. <gasps> devil's butthole? What the hell is she talking about? Kala Namak. That's right, Kala Namak, K-A-L-A -A space N-A-M-A-K, Kala Namak. That, that black salt that you get from the Indian grocery store, it smells like a boiled egg that was boiled too long. It's got a nice, strong sulfur smell. It smells like boiled eggs. You can sprinkle this on potatoes, little baby potatoes that you cooked up, you know, steamed or... Uh, pressure cooked and spring, and it'll make your little potatoes taste like boiled eggs. It's really awesome. Anyways, this isn't going to smell like boiled eggs, but the flavors of the devil's butthole in your sauce makes your sauce amazing. Trust me, do not omit this ingredient. All right. Okay. I am going to measure this out because I want to make sure that, that it uh, turns out right. And I just scoop it out. And this stuff is not expensive. Like, don't buy it online. I'll say that right now. Don't go online and buy this because you will get robbed. Find yourself a true 
Indian grocery store, some like Gandhi Bazaar or something, a good one. If you, how do you know if you have a good Indian grocery store? Go check the produce section. If that produce section has moldy vegetables, get the out of there. Don't, don't buy from them. Find a good Indian grocer with a good produce section. They usually have great prices on their vegetables. And they'll have an entire row of just their spices. And, and if you can't find Kala Namak, uh, just ask, the, ask somebody who works there. They will point it to you. And then they'll usually have like buy the bags and you shouldn't pay more than $3. That's all. And if that's like the bag is plenty. It'll take you a long time to go through that bag. But it's very reasonable prices. Do not buy it online. Find that local grocery store. Okay, there, I've set it up. That's my PSA right there. Okay. And don't ask them. Can I have some devil's, uh, I need, I'm looking for the devil's butthole. You're not going to get. Actually, you probably could, but be sure to have your camera open and on and film that the person's face when you ask them. Yes, I'm looking for the devil's butthole. So, uh, and then send it to me. Okay, it's time to blend. Did I get everything in there? Yes, okay, let's blend. It's going to be loud. All right, that's it. So I'm not trying to cook this sauce like, you know, when we do, when we make my cheese sauce, we're not cooking anything. It's just trying to get the, get the cashews uh, well blended. If, if I continue to blend this, there's enough cashews that uh, it will start to thicken, which is cool because then it's just going to get thicker in the oven. So it's okay if you forget. Oh, gosh, I can smell the devil's butthole in this. It's so good. I like sniffing the devil's butthole. I like sniffing the devil's butthole. <laughs> that song's just for you. That's just, just to help you laugh. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay, that's real nice. Yeah, you'll see that when I pour it out. Okay, that's it. That's all for that. Okay, the squash, I forgot to put the timer on. I just wanted to go like five more minutes on this squash, and it's cooked. Boom. Uh, I don't need this. Where did my pie plate go? Oh, over here. Let's pull this together. Let me reset my camera here. And it's going to be like that. Am I right? Yes. Let's go like this. Hold on. I'm presetting. There we go. <laughs> Boom. All right, now I'm out of. Okay, so right there. <laughs> Bam. All right, let's pull this together. It is not necessary to grease the pie plate. Everything will come out fine later on. Oh my gosh, I wish you could smell these. Okay. So let's look at the squash. We got some pieces. You can still see that it's light. So not all the pieces are cooked through. The bigger pieces are still good. Everything else is cooked. I mean, we could we could eat it right now, right out of the pan. 
the first time I made this, I didn't actually put it in the oven. I cooked it on the stove. Oh man, I took the sauce, poured it right over and just cooked it on low heat with the lid on until the sauce became a thick mass like an omelet and it was really good it didn't have the bread didn't have the bread crust on it i didn't write that in the recipe so this is you know you're here you you know if you don't want to turn on the oven you could make this right here in the skillet you just won't have the the bread crumb topping on on top of it i did think i don't have this if i had a skillet that i could put in the oven this would be real fun to do right here in the skillet pour the sauce on top heat it till it uh, becomes like a thick giant frittata and then um, of course the frittata is made in the oven but you know what i'm saying like it became maybe a big old omelet you put the bread crumbs on top and then throw it in the broiler just turn the broiler on for like three to five minutes broil it under the broiler and then you know in three to five minutes just toast the bread crumbs and you're good to go so you could do it that way. You could totally skip the baking process uh, if you wanted to. We could go that way too. So have fun with it. Have fun playing with this recipe. Okay, so uh, let's get this in here. I'm gonna go squash first. Oh, do not skip out on that hickory liquid smoke. All right, look here. Remember, this was a big mound, and it is not a big mound anymore. I mean, even this is like, it looks piled high but because it hasn't settled. But once I start pushing these um, squash around, it'll flatten out. Okay, before I pour the sauce on, remember how I said... Remember, remember how I said um, that for presentation, it would be it, it would be cool. Oh, this is hot. Um, to have some squash sticking out on the side. So I want this to. I'm going to do a little crafting here. We're going to craft a pretty little. Ah, this hot. Right there, just get it all around there. Prop it up. Get your good ones. Look for look for the good ones. Wasn't that Julia Child that said, when when you see food that's you know got that good presentation, you you got to remember somebody's had their hands all over it. So you better when you, you go to somebody's house and they're like, oh try my try my dish. Just know. They've had their fingers all over it, which is okay if they're a clean cook or if it's you. Okay, almost, almost around there. Oh, look at that. You are, okay, good. Getting there, getting there. I'm looking for some good, a good one. Oh, here, there's a big one right here. Right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, missed one. Move over. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that one's kind of floppy. Boom. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm just going to make some little holes for my sauce. I want my sauce to get through. All right, that looks good. All right, you see how we're doing? You see where we're going? Oh, it's going to be nice. It's going to be real nice. It's going to get good. Mm, 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 mm. I can do that. It's my house. All right. I can lick my fingers in my own house. Let's get all the way around with the sauce. You are not going to use all the sauce that you made. I have not figured out what to do with the rest of the sauce. You, well, actually, that's a lie. I just lied to you. Oh, my gosh. Please forgive me. 
Here's what you could do with the rest of the sauce. I did this the first time. There's not going to be a lot of it. It's about the amount of like a couple of omelets. But you could get out. I did this first time. Get out, uh, out a uh, small pan, something, you know, like a little tart pan or something like that, and line it with some parchment paper, okay? And then pour the rest of this sauce into that pan with the parchment paper and throw it in the oven with the pie. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to make a nice cheesy base. It's going to make you think about artichoke, that spinach artichoke dip that we, we used to like eating at the holidays. I've never made a vegan version of that, but I'm curious to try that. There's not a lot of artichoke lovers in this family, so that's why I never ventured there, but I love artichokes. Anyways, try that. Bake up the rest of the sauce in the parchment paper so you don't have any sticking, and just flop that out, and then you, it would make a really nice warm cheese. You could also probably make a little, like a little mini spinach frittata, like a little mini spinach omelet, but do it in the oven alongside this. Okay. All right, there we go. So that's nice and settled out. And there's, we'll get there. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right, and here's our breadcrumbs. Let's put the breadcrumbs on. And I'm using all these breadcrumbs. It's a lot. But I like a lot of crust. I like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of crust. This is piled up. See that? It is. You're like, holy cow, that's a lot of crust. But it's going to be beautiful. And when it starts baking, it's going to get a little flatter. Look at that. Doesn't that look fun? Wouldn't you just be so thrilled to stick this in your face? on Thanksgiving or tonight just do it tonight okay that's it looky there look how pretty it's so pretty, <gasps> it's so pretty. <sighs> okay let's pop it in the oven I, I'm using my regular oven because that's what I was doing but if you've got a Breville uh, toaster oven use it and then you won't heat up your kitchen but it's cold today here in Texas so I'm like I'm turning on the oven okay let me pop this in. Ooh, get this going. I'll put it off to the side. Set my timer for 20 minutes. All I want to do is thicken up that sauce and brown that crust. That's all I'm after. The squash is cooked. We're not thinking about that. We're just getting that sauce thicker. Okay, let's let's uh, do something with the rest of this sauce. Uh, let's get some parchment out. My box fell apart, so I have to use the side of my counter to cut my parchment. Boom. All right, and then it's going to be some crinkling. I need this to fit. So I'm going to wrinkle it up. This is how I make the parchment work for me. Wetting it helps too. If you ever need your parchment to really be cooperative, get it wet. Just... Just give it a dash of water. Don't soak it, soak it. Just give it just give it a little spritz of water. And it will really become nice and pliable for you. Okay? All right. I probably have about a cup's worth of parchment, um, of sauce. So what do I have? What do I have that I could bake? Oh, 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 I got it. Hold on. I got some vintage Pyrex. Ooh, sorry. Bang. Ooh, crash. All 
All right, you know, now if you have vintage Pyrex, you don't even need the parchment paper. Okay, an oven proof. It, okay, so here's the thing. Here's what I'm thinking. If I want to turn this out, then I could line my, my little Pyrex dish here with the parchment paper, and we could turn it out onto a plate later and eat it that way. Or if we want to have a presentation and just have something like we could scoop out of, then we don't need the parchment paper. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. I'll save the parchment paper for something else. My nose is itching. I'm falling out of frame. Just a second. My nose itching. I can't pick my nose. Hold on. Okay. I had a hanky. I'll wash my hands. Okay. It would gross me out if I saw you scratching your nose and touching food. So let me, let me just make that right. Because that's who I am. Happy birthday to me. Oh, I'm just kidding. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Let's pour this in. Somebody's asking me, do I still have all my Instapots? I am down to a six quart Instapot and my three quart. I have, yeah, that's it. My eight quart died. The, uh, there's a little, it had a little pressure regulator thing in it. It, it was replaceable, but I couldn't, I didn't want to replace it. I have fixed my iPods before. I had another iPod that, um, the little pressure regulator died. It gets stuff on it, like it's on the bottom of the pan. It's on the bottom of the pot. And if you, you know, there's times where things run over and spill over and stuff gets you know, it gets on the electrical parts and it gets crusty and it burns out. And, but it's easy to replace. You can't, I don't think you can get the, I don't know if you can get the part to replace it on the, on the maker's website. I went on to eBay and found somebody who had deconstructed, who had deconstructed iPods and they were selling off all the parts. So I bought the replacement part there on eBay and then I just popped that right in. It was real easy, just a Phillips head and, and I think an Allen wrench and you can replace it yourself. Anyways, but my big old, my big old eight quart, my big eight quart iPod the, with the electric face died. I'm thinking about putting spinach in this. Do I have any spinach? Oh, what's that? I do. Hold on. I got some frozen spinach here. Anyways, my big old uh, electric face. Uh, eight quart iPod died for that reason and uh, I don't like that one I've lived with it but I said you know when you die I don't want to buy another one of you I will I'll be ha I love having an eight quart because I can put quart size jars in it um, but I did not like that electric facing uh, so um, whenever I get around to it and I have the extra money I will, um, I may or may not get the eight quart. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, right now I still have the six quart and I have the three quart. They still, well, the three quarts put away, but the six quart still sits on the counter and it serves us well. Okay. Um, you see, I'm putting that frozen spinach in there. I'm not really sure that that frozen spinach is going to be thawed enough. It may make this watery. We'll see. This is totally on. The, oh, I'm sorry. This is totally on the fly. I probably put about a half a cup of spinach in there. Frozen spinach. We'll see. All right, let's pop this in the oven right next to the casserole. Bye. 
All right, so it's going to get, because I'm yapping, that, that sauce is going to get about 13 minutes of baking. So we'll see what happens. All right, I need to put this away in something. Save this for the next casserole. We'll, I'll tell you, we'll eat through this today. I made, I made one of these just the other day, and we killed it. Charlie, Max, and I killed it. So I would say this whole pie plate recipe is only going to satisfy two people. It's that good. All right, I'll save you for later. For something else, I don't feel like doing dishes right now. I'll spare you all of that. That's what the dishwasher's for. Okay. Boom. All right, and let me just put away my refrigerated things. Ah. Oh, that too. Let's have a Q&A. Let's have a little chit chat. That'll work. Oh, let me get these closed up too. Ba ba ba. Do do do. Do do do. Do do do. Uh, parsley goes with parsley. I've got to where I like keeping my spices in these little ball jars, and then I just write with a with a permanent marker on the lid. This comes off, by the way. If you want to pick up this tip, I mean, you'll try this. Permanent marker, Sharpie marker, works fine on these plastic ball jar, mason jar lids. A little, a, the hot, hot water and a good scrubby, you, that will rub right off on, oh, under water. So don't worry about uh, making that permanent. And then um, if your jar is smooth enough, you could just write on the jar, and that that holds up all right. It's my it's my way of doing it. And sometimes I write on the top of the lid, and sometimes I write on the side of the jar. It just depends on how it's going to live in my pantry. That's that's what's dictating that. Just like what shelf does it? work on and how fast you know and how can I see what's in there I don't really need the labels but other people do I can just smell stuff and I know what 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 it is but you know how it is okay that's it we have 10 minutes to chat I can see I got a step stool And I'm going to go right here. Boom. And we're going to chit chat right here. Okay. Skip it. Be still. Be still. Okay. That works. I need a drink. I need a drink. Got me a drink. There we go. Oh, what do I have on my clothes? Boom. Now the readers come out. <gasps> okay. Well, we're at hour and 15 minutes. I had no idea how long this was going to... Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> I had no idea how long this was going to take. But uh, it takes what it takes, right? Okay. I can see your comments. So if you... If I've done anything that you have questions about, please ask. Um, if there's any, yeah, just ask. And then let's just talk. All right, I'm going to catch up to the last few things. Oh, here we go, Pamela. Hi, Pam. How are you? Pam asks, can you substitute the tofu with anything else? I'm sure you could. Uh, again, 
this was this recipe was born out of the things that I already have in my refrigerator or already have in my pantry. So it's real quick to throw together. Um, if I didn't have tofu, I'd probably just go with all cashews. Just make a cashew sauce, cashew and hot water. Um, this is also good with um, you know like cashew and soy milk. That's really good. That's like extra creamy. Mm, gosh, that's really good. I've done that too. Um, I would go with some kind of nut-based sauce. I don't know that a cauliflower sauce or a bean sauce would work because because in this casserole dish, we're, go, we're trying to mimic, or I'm trying to mimic a sauce that whose base was sour cream, okay? So originally in a squash casserole, there would be sour cream, there would be cheddar cheese, um, most of the time it's just cheddar cheese and sour cream, and those are really yummy. Like, those are great dopamine hitters right there. And um, so, we're looking for, so when I'm cooking, making this, I want, I want the tanginess of the sour cream. And, and this is what you got to think about when you're making your sauce. You want something, you know, what do you do now that helps you recreate that sour cream flavor that you remember? And then for the cheddar part, that's where the liquid smoke's coming in. For me, when I think cheddar, I think smoky, smoky cheddar. So I'm adding that liquid smoke to to remind me of that part of cheddar and that's enough for me to 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 enjoy the recipe does that make sense i can't do soy okay that may uh, that's all right so if you can do cashews i'd say go with cashews make yourself a nice cashew sauce Veggie B says the tofu is supposed to be stored in water. I will eat that tofu before it goes south. So I am not worried about that. I would, you know what I'm saying? Like, food does not last long in our fridge. We eat it right away. But thank you for that tip. Sabine is here. Hello, Sabine. In Germany, we call them yellow zucchini, but season is over. I'm thinking that dish would work fine with other veggies. I have lots to use up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think this sauce would work great for, over potatoes. Mm, gosh, that'd be really good over potatoes. What else would I put that with? I don't know. But maybe zucchini. I think I have different. I love zucchini, but I love zucchini roasted. I don't like anything to get in the way of my green zucchini. So, um do you call green zucchini squ green squash? <gasps> Angie's got to go. I'll see you later, Angie. Thanks for being here. Don't forget to download the recipe. There you go. Deanna's got it. So she makes, Deanna makes her sour cream with cashews, nooch, and lemon juice. There you go. So this is perfect. Just do all those things because that's what you're remembering for your sour cream. And then add that, add the, um, add that cala, uh, add that devil's butthole and your liquid smoke. And don't forget that better than bouillon. That little bit of better than bouillon, no chicken base is good. Sandra says, I would have added some nooch. There you go. If I taste nooch, my head goes a little more cheese. Um, but yeah, do it. Add the nooch. Add in there what what your brain is going to be looking for that says that's what I want to taste. All right, so no, also called zucchini. So green, so it's just, you're like, if somebody says zucchini, y'all, you're all thinking green zucchini. But then if you say yellow zucchini, that, that's the that's the definer. That makes sense. Bow. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. Hmm.
Anything else? Oh, Sandra says, I would have added some nooch for the cheddar cheese flavor. That's a good idea. Um, I have. I've got two products by the same maker. I could have added these. In fact, I probably still will try this. But let me show you two products that um, they are vegan. I'm starting to, my inner critic's about to go off and freak out. But I know that y'all are all cool with this. Hold on. I got two things that I'd like to play with. Hold on. How are we doing? Oh, I got a little spillage. I can smell it. Hold on just a minute. You going? You're making a mess in my oven. Okay. All right. One is not a mystery, and the other one is something I uh, played with. Okay. We love Vile Life, the brand. Yeah, vile. Oh, that's right. Oh, good. Uh, vile life shredded shredded cheddar. This would be fun if you have access to this and you're into it. Oh my gosh, I would say right after pouring, or uh, after after making the cream sauce, stir some of this into the casserole into the sauce. I think this is spot on. This is really good. It is salty. I mean, it's going to, it's not salty like, oh, I'm bad salt. It's really good. It adds a salty note to everything you put it on. So treat it like, just know that. So you can, I think you could go too far with this if, but it's also, also awesome on nachos. <laughs> Um, I have missed these cooking lives on Saturday morning. Thank you, Deanna. Me too. Okay, and here's the new one. Gosh, my sauce is overboiling. Okay, so I didn't do this because I'm here. My brain's in, you know, different places. But um, normally I would take a baking sheet and I slide a, ba a baking sheet underneath that pad plate, like on a separate rack, uh, so that, like right now, where the sauce is uh, flowing over in the pan the sauce hits the baking sheet and not the bottom of my oven. So, uh, but I keep the baking sheet separate from the pie plate. So, I, cause I want the heat to get all the way around the pie plate and I want the pie plate to have some browning on the side. I want the sauce to brown on the side. So, uh, if I put the pie, if I put the sheet right under, you know, if I put the pie plate on the sheet, I, I won't get that. So I want the heat to get all the way around. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Okay. Um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, shh, shh, off, okay, um, Vile Life is at my regular grocery store, I shop H-E-B, which is a, I'd say a regular grocery store, I mean, I live in Austin, okay, so there's lots of options here in Austin, but H-E-B is our Texas-based grocery store, it's, H-E-Bs are all across uh, Texas. So the um, Vile Life, this is a new one that HEB has started putting on their shelf, and it's Mature Cheddar Slices. And this, y'all, is the bomb for making grilled cheese sandwiches. Max loves this. Um, but I was thinking, this is in slices, and I was thinking a few, a few slices of this cut up into little squares or diced up, and then sprinkle that on top of the sauce before you put the breadcrumbs in there or maybe stir it into the sauce and then then you could have like that you could be mature you could have mature cheese sauce versus like i want to pretend like i'm eating vegan nachos from the after the softball game you know this is awesome uh this is really good eating on cheese and crackers like you want a little snack night mm, that's how we were that's how we've started eating this. Okay, Michelle says, miss the recipe, came late to the party. Okay, so the recipe is on my website. Go over to jillmckeever.com. It's right there on the homepage, first block, Jill's Golden, what I call it? Squash Casserole. It is a little PDF file that you can download. You can see it from your device. 
and uh, you can see it on your any of your devices and you can print it off and then just hang it right there I got to get this out of the oven before we burn it so let me push this back hold on get my coffee cup and my hair out of the way y'all we're done we're almost out of here I'm gonna let you go so you can go to the grocery store I just heard you say go to the grocery store on a Saturday are you crazy uh, that's true okay here we go um I'm gonna go here and then here and then here hold on we're gonna get this out oh, then get me set up here let's get this out of the oven hold it dun 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 Oh my lord, it's so good looking. Here we go. Here she comes. Miss Golden Squash. Here she comes. Ooh. What I tell you about the golden part? <gasps> Boom. Okay, my cheese sauce. I think it's because of the squash. I mean the the spinach. The spinach is still, sorry, the spinach was so cold. See, it's not setting. It's kind of loose right there, but it is starting to get thick on the side. Y'all see that? So I'm going to let this go. Actually, let's taste it from the sidelines. I'll just, you know, I'll eat the side and I'll tell you how that, how that works. And then I'm going to pop it back in the oven, but I'm not going to torture you with that. I'm not gonna make you look at food too much longer. <sighs> okay, let's do a. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that is beautiful. Okay, hold on. Here, let's get a little closer. This thing is popping hot. Oh, other way. Sorry. No, I'll get this here. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Jill always makes me laugh. Oh, thank you. Oh. Okay. Just check Kroger delivery and they have both kinds of bio life. Oh, joy. Yay. See, we don't have Kroger here in Austin. And uh, my aunt, uh, she loves shopping Kroger. And she's always calling up and telling me how good their bulk section is and uh she finds all sorts of fun spices there so i'm a little jealous that you got a kroger and i don't um but yeah kroger is great so don't forget to order some squash too okay look at how beautiful this is oh and see what look isn't this nice this makes a nut i'm going the wrong way this makes such a nice oh no there we go <laughs> This makes such a nice presentation. Let me edit this. Hold on a edit. Boom. Get my head up out. If I stay in this seat, it'll be okay. I won't chop my head off. Hold on. There we go. I'll move my head. This makes such a nice presentation. Pulling the squash to the side. Now I need I need this. I'm gonna cut into this before I let y'all go. But I, but the sauce needs to thicken. If I bust into this, it'll be a little runny. So wait 10 minutes before you uh, serve it. And this is lava hot. Like the squash is going to be really hot when you bite into it. You you could burn your your tongue um, or you know burn your mouth. So just wait 10 minutes at least before biting into it. And the sauce will have a chance to thicken up and it'll hold. And when you cut into it, it'll just be like a really nice, solid mass of awesomeness in your face. So uh, just hang tight. We're, we're going to put that off to the side. We'll leave it in frame. Boom, boom, boom. Let's push it. How do I do that? Uh, let's push it this way down this way oh yeah like that let's get it in your face 
like like that. Okay, now let's come over here. Oh, oh throw away. God, it's backwards. I'm such a goober. Okay, there we go. So just in talking, see, this is really loose. I need something to eat this with. Uh, what would we eat this with? Um, I got... I got some wheat thins and I got a trisket. Okay, I got some original wheat thins. Let's party crackers, man. We're gonna party. Let's pretend that we're having a holiday party. And we're gonna put this on the table for snacking to keep everybody out of the kitchen. That's not gonna work. Kitchen's the best place, right? Okay. Can you do this with zucchini as well or a bit of squash mix? I don't know, Pam. I haven't done it that way because my taste buds right now and what I'm craving is just that traditional golden squash casserole. So uh, we are going to have to explore that together. But right now, that's where my head is. You know what? You know, you know where I am when we're craving an old school favorite. That's I'm just set right there. I am like a hound dog. I am just wanting that old school favorite. I'm, I just want that. I haven't gone. I haven't gone there. Okay. So my um, Triscuits, I have rosemary and olive oil Triscuits. And I have original wheat dents. So I'll try those. If I had like a, a baguette, that would be good. Like some fresh baker, baked bread from the bakery or something that I'd made myself. Okay, let's try it. First, with the wheat thins. And then with the, oh yeah. Okay, there we go. Let's try it. Wheat thin, because the wheat thin doesn't have as much flavor as this rosemary olive oil. I bought the rosemary olive oil for um, for all the cheeses. I went crazy on the BioLife cheeses the other day. Okay, let me get some. I want a piece of spinach right here. Oh, look at that. Okay, look, we got some body. This is the side of the container. So we got we got some body. It's probably gonna be hot. Hmm. Let me focus the whole phone. Okay, I like the sauce, but I don't like the straight spinach. This this spinach that I have, it's a little, it's earthy, right out of the bag. So if I do this again, I'm gonna cook the spinach first in the pan, saute it up real good, and get rid of that earthy flavor that it has then add it to the sauce but right now it's too it's too earthy okay so all right let me try uh with a triscuit rosemary and olive oil but i'm not going to pick up the i'm not going to pick up the uh, spinach okay there we go just like that boom mm. yeah Joy, you're with me. You're we're on the same track. Mmm. Oh, that's pretty decent. That's actually pretty good. I am dropping food. Um all right, I'm using the other side of my cracker. I'm not double dipping. I cannot stand double dipping, even if it's just me. There we go. Mm. Okay, 
that's good together. But the the rosemary on this cracker is so strong, it totally mutes out the cheese sauce. Let's go back to the Triscuit. I mean the wheat thin. Let's go back to the wheat thin. Let's get this on the side. I think this is better with some body. In the middle with the sauce where it's not it's not set, it doesn't have the same yay to it. Yeah. It needs bacon. All right. Not bacon like B-A-C-O-N. Bacon. Like it needs bacon in the oven some more. So I'm going to pop that back in the oven. I had that set on 400. I'm going to go 10 minutes. See what happens. All right. Hello, baby. Look at that. All right, let's try this. Put that away. I want you to see the inside of this, and then I'm going to let you go. Okay? I want you to see how this sets up. And then I, I'm going to let y'all go. And I'll be home. I'm home all day today. I'm just going to go sit on the couch. I'm going to go have my second cup of coffee. And in, and just enjoy my Saturday morning. So I'll be reading comments. So if y'all want to talk, uh, y'all want to keep on talking, I'll be in the comments. All right, let me get a plate. Oh, I did that. I won't be in the comments right away. When I get done here, when I turn this off, I gotta wash my dishes. So I'm gonna wash up, throw everything in the dishwasher, and then I'm going to the couch and enjoying my second cup of coffee. All right, does that work? How low? How are we gonna do this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, I like that. Hold on, I'm gonna get you in there. I'm gonna get you in there. Oh, that's too close. Okay, I'm back. All right, here we go. I want this right. This is the moment of the... Get... How do I... All right, here we go. Ready? Where am I? So weird to do this backwards. Drum roll, everybody. Drum roll. I could probably let this cool more and it would just keep setting. I need a bigger spoon. Oh, let's make this right. This is an important moment. Get a honk, like a honking spoon. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look, see, no running. Oh, oh, shit. Look at that. Ooh. Oh. Look at that. Can you see it? Okay, I got a little wateriness going on here. It's because it's not cooled down completely, but... Okay, keep letting the dish cool, and this will all thicken up, okay? Let's see, it's got a little runny going on, but... Oh. Okay, spoon, fork, I don't know, everything. So delicious. I'm going to take this right here. You can have that. Ah. Boom. Uh, actually, let's go here. Then just go. Let's just do that. There we go. Hello. Oh, you don't need two of me. That's just too much of me. We can't handle that. Two of me on the screen. Ah. Okay. All 
All right, here we go. I know this is good. I'm just doing this for y'all. Y'all pretend. Y'all live vicariously through me. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so amazing. Look at that. That squash holds up. Oh, it's popping. Can you see the steam on this? Hold on. See the steam barreling off of this? this is... Wow. Okay, there we go. My mouth is watering. Good. It's working. <gasps> Ah. Oh, come on. Mm. Y'all, I am a poopin' awesome cook. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. Okay, you gotta get, go download the recipe. Go to the store if you have to. Order your groceries. You could be noshing on this tonight. If you're, you know, this, oh, look at that. So good. I think it would be fun if we, you know, mixed in a little bit of that vile life cheddar cheese. The mature cheddar. Stick that in there. I mean, then it's like, then I would be like, Lifting this up, and there'd be like that cheesy, gooey, oh, sexy part, you know? Oh, that would be fun. <gasps> Hello. Thank you for being here. Oh my gosh. Huh. All right. So remember the size of the the size of the um, squash is going to be important, okay? How much you slice this. If you get that squash too thick, thicker than a quarter of an inch, you're going to have a big watery bite, okay? So don't do that. Keep, keep your slices small. Keep your sauce on the thick side when you're blending it, okay? Because it will just continue to get thicker when you bake it. Do not leave out the devil's butthole for anything. Um, and then use all your breadcrumbs and, uh, let the, and you see the breadcrumbs, like, remember, I, they, they looked piled high when we put it on, right? But when it bakes, it starts baking, it all flattens out. Everything flattens out. We had a big heap when we started out, but it all settles and, and all those breadcrumbs just settle down and they get really good and crunchy and beautiful golden. And we didn't. And it's just so simple to throw together. And again, this crust is great on any of your casseroles, like your creamy tetrazzini recipes, or uh, you want to do a you know cre do a creamy Alfredo dinner and then throw these throw these on top of it. I mean, that's fun too. That like if you really want to have make your you know just to mix it up, you can take your creamy Alfredo pasta night. Mix your sauce and your pastas together. Throw that in a casserole dish. Put this breadcrumb topping on top of that. And you've got like a really simple, uh, you know, casserole that is totally, you know, will make the whole family happy. It'll make you happy and it'll make everybody happy. Because anything with a breadcrumb topping and cream sauce is amazing. You can't go wrong. You will always be a superhero when you put those together. Okay, that's it. I've tried it. Oh my gosh. Joy asks, when are you going to do the chocolate cake you talked about in your last video? We have eight birthdays every year. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, that's a good question. Well, oh. Uh, let me think about that. And then I'll get back to you because I don't want to promise anything right now because, uh, but I will make an announcement when, when I, when, when I come up with the day. Thank you for that suggestion. And I will, I will serve you well because that's a good, I have a really good chocolate cake recipe that we love. We eat it all the time. It's great. Okay. I'm ending this right now. I'm going to let y'all go because I'm a Texan and this could be a 20 minute goodbye. Please download the recipe. 
thank you for your support today. Thank you for being here. And I'm so tickled that you're tickled that I'm here. And I'm, um, oh, and the peanut butter cups. Oh, yeah. Deanna's asked about the peanut butter cups. Let's do those next. Now, that I could tell you we could do that. Let's do that next Saturday. Do we want to wait till next Saturday? Let's not wait till next Saturday. When do we want? Let's, how about midweek? What are y'all doing Wednesday? Y'all doing anything Wednesday? Um, we'll get together then and I'll show you how to make the peanut butter cups. Peanut butter bars. Yeah, same, same. Mm -hmm. I'd make peanut butter bars. I'll show you what they look like. I got a mess of them in the fridge right now. I have to write peanut butter cups on them. These are so good. Yeah. Look at that. Simple. They are so delicious. A little bit of chocolate on the top. You can have these made up in about 20 minutes. They're so easy, so delicious. And they taste like Reese's peanut butter cups. They are amazing. Um, this is all that's left, too, out of a huge batch. This is a this is about two cups of peanut butter. It's worth. Uh, it made a big batch, and then of course four of us in this house are just chowing on them. I love eating these. So maybe if I get reboot my energy, I could do it later on today. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll make sure that this will be the next recipe I share with y'all. Okay, I hate to be y'all flim flamsy and not be set in that time, but let's just go with the flow. And I'll promise that the, the very soon I'll, I'll share this as my next recipe. All right. I'm going to let y'all go again. I'm going to let you go. Go download the recipe. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. And, uh, and then let's just keep on talking about this in the comments. Okay. I got to go. That cheese sauce is done. That was it. That's getting better. It's not as thick. Okay, maybe not. More cashews. Definitely more cashews. That was 10 more minutes. That was 10 more minutes at 400 degrees. Hold on. I do not want to accidentally say this. But I still got, there's a little wiggle wiggle. You know, my money don't jiggle jiggle. When it walks. Okay. See, maybe that'll firm up when it cools. My sauce, it goes jiggle, jiggle when I jiggle, jiggle. All right. We'll see. Let's just keep working on this one. Save this for another day. All right. I'm going to go clean out the kitchen. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you for being here.